recording in progress. Just waiting for the recording to start. Yes. Welcome back to the next session on the anointing. So the anointing. Of God. So even before we could uh, move on to the anointing, uh, yes, there are some questions. Previous session. Yes, um, Sid has posted saying that there's some political people in the state where they come and use the church pulpit to ask for votes. And okay, yeah, that happens sometimes in some of the small churches, but then that's not the right thing. As we study today, as we discuss, saying that, you know, we should not give the pulpit time to uh, anything else other than the word of God. Okay, and we also see another question. From Brother Elisha. Okay, as a preacher of the word, when we discover that a doctrine you would have thought congregation over the period was wrong, you need to apologize to them that you were wrong initially and begin the teaching of the truth, or you just put it behind and move on. Okay, it is a very important thing. Thank you, Elisha, for sharing this. As a preacher or as a teacher of the word, when we teach or preach and then later we have found that is not right or it was incorrect, it is good thing. It is the right thing to apologize to the congregation and share the right share the truth in the right way what the scripture says it is very very important to do that yeah thank you and uh, we should never feel that as a leader how i can apologize uh, there's nothing like that as a leader we should learn to apologize we should learn to accept our mistake and correct ourselves so that is the right thing to do Okay, so with this, we will move on to the next chapter on anointing. So if you have a book, we can turn to chapter 6 on anointing. So it is the anointing of God's Spirit. It's the anointing of God. We all know it is really important. That's what makes all the difference and um, in the ministry. Uh, at the end of the day, it is not our eloquence of words. It's not how we speak. It is not our skill. It is not our natural ability that is going to make a difference in the lives of people when we minister, preach or teach the word, but it is ultimately the Holy Spirit. He is the one who moves through us through this earthen vessel and who uses the gifts that he has given to us to bless people's lives. So the anointing that we all understand is what makes all the difference. But here are some safeguards that we must keep in mind that anointing and gifts are given to people. The reason God is anointed each one of us and he has given us this gift is to minister and serve people to bless the lives of people to edify them to build them up that's why god has blessed us with the gifts of the spirit to edify the church to edify the body of christ to build them to nurture them to draw them to the word of God, to get them rooted in the word. So let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, please. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Thank you. Can I also request... Uh, someone to read on First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12, please. Even so you, since you are zealous 
for spiritual gift let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel yes and can one of us please turn to second corinthians chapter 4 verse 5 please for we do not preach ourselves but christ jesus the lord and ourselves your born servants for jesus sake second corinthians 4 5 thank you thank you so that means the gifts that god has given us it's for the edification of the people and that i have off the camera yeah it's for the edification of the people uh, it's to get they to see their lives been transformed we must always remind ourselves that this is for the blessing of people now uh, here's what we make the mistake Uh, mistake is that many times once we have someone recognize that god has anointed them and uh, god has given them certain gifts um, and uh, and we see them flow in that gift so we now tend to think that uh, uh, that people uh, uh, you know uh, they have been gifted uh, so we need to serve them or uh, they also as a individual when we see ourselves been gifted uh, and we are flowing that gift now we think that we are someone who are much greater than others and we expect the church the people to serve us no that should not be the case because we have been anointed and gifted so we want us we want to serve others because as we uh, we know that Jesus came not to uh, uh, not to be served but to serve so we need to be ready enough to serve others so what we actually doing is uh, sometimes uh, the nature of people okay <clears throat> i'm not blaming anyone but then the nature the very nature is uh, uh, the minute they recognize themselves been gifted they try to elevate themselves they try to separate themselves from people they try to do things reverse from what god intended the gifts and calling that god has placed in their life is to be with people to serve them but then here we see something different people try, try to elevate themselves above people they try to separate themselves and they expect people to serve them but then this is not what jesus has taught us jesus has taught us jesus been 100% god and 100% man when he came on to this earth he humbled himself he was one among everyone he dined with sinners he lived with them he ate with them he was one among the people he never separated himself from others well he also said that i've come here to serve and not to be served we, we need to learn so uh, never an anointing that was on jesus separated jesus from others or made uh, jesus to look down upon others but then here he, he was moved into compassion that's what we see in matthew 14 14 saying that jesus was moved into compassion and he was always with people and wherever jesus was there was a huge crowd following him you see wherever jesus was there was huge crowd following him always jesus was with people he was serving them tirelessly he never took any time away for himself but then he gave in for them he was there for them he was there to serve them so we need to be mindful of this when god has blessed us with certain gifts and callings he has placed us in our life it is for us to edify the church it is for us to minister to people serve them and not uh, you know elevate ourselves or you know uh, stay away from people no so god moves uh in and through us with this gifts and calling to serve people and we need to be there and also one more uh, uh one more uh, character we see is uh, people being very short tempered they could be really terrible behind the pulpit uh, i mean they become very short tempered they become very angry they become very rude ill mannered but when they are under the anointing 
they're very calm, properly mannered. They can, uh, they have greater understanding. They speak well, but outside the anointing, they are very different. They are totally a different person. So we need to, we should uh, avoid making such things in our in our way of life, in our walk of our life. We need to identify the spirit that is within us. We need to stay calm always. We need to be the same on the pulpit or outside. We need to stay same. We are in Jesus and Jesus is in, abiding in us. So this gifting and calling are in us is the role of the body of Christ and our identity is in Christ. So we must uh, no, we must know our identity of who we are in Christ is who we really are. And we need to maintain that always. We are not trying to, you know, uh, uh, pretend ourselves a different person on the pulpit. And, you know, after that, we are somebody else, some uh, a different person. No, we should be always aware of our identity is in Christ and all such other things are not from the Spirit of God. They are not the fruit of the Spirit. We need to be filled with, his, with the gifts and with the fruits of the Spirit so that we can see the overflow of that anointing in our lives. So another... Another part of the anointing of God is that uh, you and I must be determined to always desire the genuine and not tolerate the imitation. Very important. Some people can fake uh, meaning, pretending that they are uh, anointed and they may print it, uh, pretend uh, to have the gifts flowing in their lives and they just fake it. Remember, what is imitation? Uh, the imitation cannot carry the power. They are not genuine. There is no life in it. Uh, they cannot impact or change or transform life by their words because it is just an imitation. But then when it is flowing from the anointing, we know, the, we know that it is flowing from God himself. He is speaking. He is teaching in and through them. And you, we can also see the attitude of the minister of God, always wanting to serve God, serve his people with all his heart, mind and soul. So we see the anointing that flows in and through that person to others. So we need to see that and we cannot tolerate any such thing. So can we turn to Exodus chapter 30, verse 31 and 32, please? Exodus chapter 30, verse 31 and 32. And you shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, This shall be a holy anointing oil to me throughout your generations. It shall not be poured on man's flesh, nor shall you make any other like it. According to its composition, it is holy, and it shall be holy to you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So God is speaking to Moses and talking to him about the holy anointing oil, which is a type of the Holy Spirit. The anointing in the New Testament, he says these things to the children of Israel. He's saying the holy anointing oil to me is throughout your generation. It shall not be poured out on man's flesh, nor shall you make any other like it. According to its composition, it is holy. So to you, so God is saying, don't make an imitation of this holy anointing oil because it is not to be used on flesh. It's not to be used on uh, for any ordinary purposes because it is holy, it is consecrated before God. So we must not tolerate the imitation. Conse uh, you know, because... This is a consecrated oil. The anointing is holy. So we need to go behind the genuine. Do not run after the uh, latest fad in the Christodome. We know in the church today, uh, there are a lot of things can arise, can amuse us.
but we need to know the identity we need to know the right the genuine thing and not run behind the imitations because the scripture also warns us that in the uh, you know there will be many such things arising uh, with all kinds of fads that can come in the church over time and all things uh, you know people are doing in certain way which is different from the word of god and they call it as the anointing the gifting um this is how the holy spirit moves but we need to check with the word of god does the word say so and then discern and then go for it but do not run behind every move which they call as the gifting or the anointing or the holy spirit or the move of the holy spirit Let's turn to John chapter six, verse sixty-three, please. John six sixty-three. It is the Spirit who gives light. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. Thank you. For some reason, we observe all kinds of fads, or uh, you know, the novel ways. But we need to be very careful because the spirit gives life, and the flesh profits nothing. They are generated by the flesh. That people, uh, you know, went after their own understanding, profits nothing. It is the Holy Spirit who gives us the life, and we must learn to stay alert and learn the flow with the Spirit of God. Remember. as far as the anointing is concerned we cannot have something unless we receive it from god we may desire that is the right thing because that's when we receive the gifts of the spirit only when we hear it we have been educated uh, we have been learning about the gifts of the spirit and then we desire for it and then we can yearn and pray and seek god for that gift then we running after people post and pillar to get that gift from them we should remember that god gives the anointing the anointing comes from god god releases the gifts and anointing yes he also releases the gifts and anointing through other people but at the end of the day you still have to receive it from god that's what we see in john chapter 3 verse 27 can i request one of us to please turn to john chapter 3 verse 27 please John chapter three verses twenty seven. John answered and said, "A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven." Yes, thank you. See, it 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 works this way. The minute you start desiring, minute you start desiring for that spiritual gift, that is the first place. It is the right thing to do, and then you start. praying you start seeking god for it yes there are ways how god can release that anointing in your life god can release it through his word in your prayer time in your spiritual walk with god or there are times when um, he can release it to the man of god as he has prepared you he can release it through that but at the end of the day we receive it from god we receive it from god in time So John said, "A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. So ultimately, it has to come to us from God. Now it is important and it is useful, and it is also valuable to follow the examples of men and women of God and to learn and receive from their ministries. But a heart must not be set on that man or that individual." to receive the gift but our heart should be set on god and god alone because it is god who is the giver of the anointing and the gift to us not any individual or any man we should not pursue any individual but we need to pursue god who is the giver of all gifts so it is very important when we when we uh, when we minister under uh, the anointing is that we must allow ourselves to be judged at the same time because god's spirit moves through us 
So it doesn't mean that we are perfect. We are not the perfect vessel. We have been used. We are imperfect. But God is perfect. His gifts are perfect. But the vessel through which God is using is imperfect. The gift that has been expressed through this vessel is imperfect. So the process of his anointing being manifested through this earthen vessel is a process of the gift being released to us. So we need to be very careful. We should not misrepresent anything or miscommunicate anything. We need to release the gifts of the Spirit in a manner that is worthy. We should be mindful of how we release this gift to others because the giver of the gift is perfect because God is perfect and he is the giver of all gifts and as God releases this gift in and through us as he allows it to flow in and through us we need to judge ourselves we need to be correct so we can uh, improve in the in the area we can improve how we release the anointing to our congregation to minister to people how we express the gifts of the holy spirit to others and we don't allow <clears throat> so we don't allow others to judge what god is releasing in and through us so a uh, very sorry just give me a minute please So the important aspect of ministering the anointing is to avoid any sensationalism or hypo-emotionalism. Yes, it is wonderful to see God's touch, the emotion of people and how they respond uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the anointing. Some respond by crying, some respond by laughing or some, uh, some experience joy and peace and all that is beautiful. But if we try on our own web uh, to, uh, to stir the emotions of people or to do something uh, to, uh, you know, to instill uh, them to cry or instill them to laugh, what I just try is some way that we are whipping and playing up with the emotions of people in order to get a response which actually should come from the Holy Spirit and not what we are actually, what uh, through our own effort. That is actually not right. And it's not our responsibility to, to create an emotion in people, but they should receive a touch from God. That emotion should be stirred from the Holy Spirit so that internally they have been transformed. The word, what we are releasing from the pulpit should minister to people. That emotion needs to be created by the understanding of the Holy Spirit in them. So it is the move of the Holy Spirit upon people which will create, uh, which will make them to react to the message that has been shared, to the ministry of the Holy Spirit which has been ministered with an anointing from the pulpit. That's how we see some people cry, some people uh, feel free, they, they experience the peace, they experience the joy of the Holy Spirit. So it is the work of the Holy Spirit and not work of a man. And we should not stir it with our own effort. We should not create any emotional response in people because that won't last long. That won't transform the heart of the people. That won't make a person to be transformed inside out. Because these kind of emotion that has been stirred, it will be just like a pep talk, which will just last, um, you know, as soon as they step out of that auditorium or the church or out of that place it won't last long so when when we depend on the holy spirit for the holy spirit to minister to the people minister to the congregation when it is the work of the holy spirit we see um, the uh, the real transformation in people which will last long in them so through this we can avoid any kind of you know uh, personal 
stirring among people but when we depend on the holy spirit there's a lasting change from them and those moments <clears throat> Uh, those few moments uh, will uh, be important which will be, which will be fruitful to us in the ministry and also to the people because at the end of the day the lord wants us to be fruitful he has called us to bear fruit in our ministry We also see in, in John chapter 15, he says that as I abide in you, can I request one of us to turn to Jan, John chapter 15, verse 1 and 2, please? John chapter 15, verse 1 and 2. I am the true vine, and my father is the wine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Amen. So it may bear more fruit. So the Lord... Uh, uh, so we are we, uh, so we need to be watchful about the result that we have in our ministry as lord jesus has called us and ordained us so that we will bear fruit in our ministry so as we read in this chapter john 15 verse 1 and 2 that you know um, any branch that does not bear fruit will be cut off but every branch that bears fruit it will be pruned so it can bear more fruit so in the ministry we can either be pruned or cut and the option is our choice would be pruned so it can you know uh, if you are pruned we can bear much fruit for the kingdom of god so god works in us through pruning and cutting things off that does not belong to him and his kingdom and we need to allow god to do that very important so when we go into the presence of god we can say lord here i am you can uproot the things that does not belong to you you can prune me so that i can be more fruitful in the kingdom of God. I can be of more use in your kingdom to serve people, to minister to people. As we continue to move in this, we will continue to move in greater level of being fruitfulness in the kingdom, in the ministry of God that God has placed in us. So when God prunes us so that we can even become more fruitful in our life, bear more fruit. So God is that constant pruning taking up all the unnecessary things. He can uproot it from our life so that, you know, we can uh, move on to a greater level of fruitfulness in the ministry, in the kingdom of God with much talent. And God can multiply that skill and talent in us because Jesus described that as he spoke to us about the parable of talents in Matthew 25. We see that, uh, you know, uh, how uh, he expects this talent to be multiplied. And he also says to that servant, well done, good and faithful servant. So the same way, God is asking us to be fruitful. So that God, one day, uh, you know, he can look at us and he can say, this is your reward. Well done, good and faithful servant. So in ministry, we have new levels, but we must always keep in mind that fruit, crumb, fruit comes in its season. So there are times we need to wait for the fruit, but we should always know it always comes in its season. And there is a time, there is a time and God is working in and through us and we need to be patient. We need to have that endurance to see the fruit in our ministry, in our life in people to whom we are ministering we should not give up in the process because god takes us through where we are actually not being nurtured to things so that we can uh, germinate from inside and then bear much fruit in season sometimes we also be looking for fruit in a season when it's not due 
yet we can get discouraged thinking that it may be um, God's not doing things in our life or uh, uh, this is not God's will or God does not want me to be fruitful or, uh, you know, many things. God does not want to multiply my talent or skill or my ministry. My congregation is so small. Uh, <clears throat> we can just go on adding the reason to the list when we are stagnant or when uh, God is asking us to wait. But one thing we should know, for everything there is a season. And every person goes through each season in our life. Even now in our class, if I open to all, each of us are in different season. But at the end of the day, we all are waiting on God. We are waiting for Him. In a waiting time is not a wasted time. When we wait on Him, there's endurance, there's patience, there's something happening within us, there's nurturing, there is a time of germination that is happening within us. We may not understand the work of God now, but when we wait on God without any question, but just praising and waiting and seeking God, what needs to be done and continue to do what you are doing because the labor in the Lord is not in vain. When we depend on God, he leads us. He leads us. And we will see the hand of God after a few months or uh, after a few weeks, months or years when we look back the season that we went through. We will see God's hand on our life. He will, yes, take us through the time of pruning, take us, take us through the time of waiting. That is the germination time, the growth time. We may see not, not, nothing happening on the surface, but always remember the seed that is sown, um, you know, it is uh, it is getting rooted. It is growing internally. So in our waiting time, we need to see what are the areas that we need to work on? What are the areas that we need to get equipped, trained, build our skill, build our, uh, learn talents? As we keep doing it, you see God working in and through us. So this is not the time period for us to be discouraged or stay quiet and uh, keep complaining what God is not doing in our life because we don't understand God completely with our little mind. We need to just praise and understand um, and wait and try to understand God what he is doing in our life. So let's turn to John chapter 7 verse 18 please. John chapter 7, verse 18. A person making things up tries to make himself look good, but someone trying to honor the one who sent him sticks to the facts and does not tamper with reality. Amen. Well, now, if our intent is to glorify Jesus, we must say the facts. We state the facts. We don't tamper with the evidence. We don't tamper with reality because... We know that ultimately God will be glorified. So if I want to make myself look good, then I'm going to try to make things up and try to exaggerate things and uh, talk things beyond what the reality is. So it's very important in Christian ministry that we only talk about Christ. We only talk about the fact that has actually happened and we don't try to exaggerate things and talk be, uh, beyond the reality so uh, when we talk about any res, uh, any testimonies it just states simply what happened firmly believe that when we just state the fact state the fact uh, uh, just let things happen it will uh, impact the lives of people so god can be glorified through that but if we try to exaggerate and create a lot of hype or it, um, you know, actually trying to draw attention to ourselves and getting others distracted and ourselves also distracted with the attention of people. And that is which was due to God. And the uh, and also when we give testimonies or talk about results, it is important that we state whether we are giving an exact or an estimate. And not just pretend uh, or exaggerate with the uh, kind of numbers. For example, if uh, uh, we, we have gone to minister in some place, 
minister uh, uh, in a place and where we have seen many people come to uh, uh, to that uh, uh, to that conference so we don't have to exaggerate by saying i had uh, we had 6000 people or 7000 people who had come for the ministry instead just give the actual number this many people had come for the ministry and they were blessed we don't have to exaggerate with some big numbers but just give the actuals and give the glory to god and leave it because we have seen many times like you know people quote big numbers and say we had about this many people come well the actual may be very different from what people had come so it is very important as a minister of god to say exactly how many people came and were blessed than giving a big number <clears throat> for the promotion sake or getting or just uh, being exaggerating things beyond the actual and that's not true just give me a minute please excuse me One second. We, the next point here we are about to discuss is acknowledge another man's labor. Can I request one of us to turn to 2 Corinthians 10, 15 and the other turn to Galatians 6, chapter 6, verse 4. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 15. Not boasting of things beyond measures, that is in man's labor, but having hope that as faith is increased, we shall be greatly enlarged by you in our spare. Amen. Next, Galatians chapter 6, verse 4. Galatians 6, 4. But let each one examine his own work and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another uh not in one i'm uh, sorry and uh, not in another yeah sorry no problem no problem so we must learn to acknowledge another man's labor you know uh in that we mentioned in another episode like you know we have also studied i'm sure you will be studying in the kingdom of god or in others where we should acknowledge another man's labor we are co-labor we work with each other we enter into one uh, uh another man's labor and we complement each other so we cannot take all the credit for ourselves but especially when we are working as a team, uh, we work as a team together. So we need to give credit to everyone in the team and not take it to ourselves. Because without them, we would not have achieved what we are. Uh, even uh, uh, in the scripture, we see how Paul and Apollos and other disciples work together as a team in ministering the word of God. Paul never took the credit for himself, but then he gave the credit to others. Even though people brought a lot of division between Paul and Apollos, but then Paul was very clear. There's always one man sows a seed and other waters, but the growth comes from the Lord. And at the end of the day, Paul gives all glory to God. He does not take any credit to himself. He says, yes, there's one man who sowed the seed there's another who watered it but god gave the growth so we need to acknowledge another man's labor and we should not uh, be uh, you know um, uh, selfish enough to take all the credit to ourselves but then acknowledge others who have worked and who have, who have also invested their time uh, into the ministry so 
Yes, uh, by acknowledging another man's labor uh, is by uh, giving God the glory as well for the life that that person lived and toiled in the ministry because the word of God says that uh, your labor in the Lord will never be in vain. Will never be in vain. That's what, you know, the scripture says. So when, uh, when we see people uh, working and toiling, give glory to God and to that person. Give God all the glory. It all happened because of him. Yes, we need to give glory to God. As I said, it is God who brings and uh, gives the result. So do not compare, do not compete. In the ministry, can I request one of us to please turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, please? Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Thank you. So when we're looking at the result the uh, in our congregation, maybe the size, the growth, or uh, uh, the growth of our ministry. Do not compare ourselves with the other ministry leaders because this is not a competition. We should not compete with others with how many people are uh, we reaching out or they're reaching out, how big is our local church with them. So these things do not matter in the eyes of the Lord. What matters is the Lord requires us to be faithful in whatever we are doing, are we faithful? Are we uh, pleasing God in all the area of our life? Are we giving our best to the church, to the ministry? Are we growing into what God has ordained in our lives? Are we staying faithful to our call? So these are what really matters to God. So when we stay focused on the fruit that God wants us to bear, so we can stay focused on the kind of result God is looking for through us in our life in our ministry that God has put in our hands. We are responsible to it. So God decides whom he calls. He calls them to and how he blesses those he calls. Romans 14, 4 says, Who are you to judge another's servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Indeed, he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. So we should not be comparing ourselves to others or competing with others. We just need to be focused on ourselves in the ministry, which God has blessed us with. And we need to be, we are totally responsible for the souls that God has placed in our life, how we are toiling in our own area, how we are ministering to our people, how we are serving them. And are we giving our best is a question. Then we looking at others, then we seeing the growth of other churches and getting ourselves discouraged. No, that does not matter. We need to see God. God, what you have called me, am I doing it well? Am I there for my people? Am I ministering the word of God? Am I giving my best to the church? At the end of the day, the growth comes from God. We need to depend on God. Because in the early church, when we read the book of Acts in the first two to three chapters, we see that God added people to the church. That means the growth comes from God. When we genuinely desire see God to see uh, the word, uh, when we seek to share the word of God with others, God brings in people. Even when we read the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, we see wherever Jesus was, people gathered. There was a huge crowd gathered wherever people was. So wherever the presence of God is in these days, we'll see people getting attracted to that presence of God. So what we need to be mindful of is the anointing of God. When God is there, when his presence is there, when he's moving in and through us, we see people being attracted to that anointing. God will bring in people. God will add people who are in need to us. 
to our church, to our congregation. And we'll see God adding people um, to the congregation. The church will grow by him and not by us or by our eloquent in speech or by our gift and anointing. No, it is God who does everything. It is God who gives us the gifts. It is God who called us. It is God who anointed us and God who gives us the gift. And it is God who moves in and through us. So in everything, there is nothing for us to take pride or take credit for, but give all glory to God because he is the ultimate. He is the God above everything. He needs to be praised. He deserves all praise and all glory because this anointing is from God. Just imagine as a merman, as a human, can we change a person? Can we transform a person's heart by our words, by our speech? We cannot. Not by our words. It is the Lord. It's the Spirit of the Lord who moves in and through us. It's the same Spirit of the Lord who will be moving in and through that person. The hearts are been transformed by the move of the Holy Spirit and not by any man. It's not done by any individual, but it is definitely done by God and His anointing over us, over our ministry. So with everything, what we learn is it is the God who deserves all glory. He is the one who gives us the anointing and we need to seek Him for every spiritual gift for us to be a blessing in the ministry. So with this, I end this chapter to see the fruitful result in us and as an individual and in the ministry, we need to be dependent on God as, as the scripture says in John 15, when we abide in him and he abides in us, as we are one in spirit with God, we shall be fruitful. With this, I leave, I end this session and I open up to the class for discussion. You would like to share, add or discuss, please go ahead. Ma'am, uh, uh, this is uh, not regarding the session. This is regarding assignment. Can I ask? Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so for Minister's Foundation, uh, like uh, what all we need to include, uh, like from those um, both resources, like fulfilling God's purpose, and how much do you expect us to, um, uh, like, yeah, how do you want us to uh, go about writing it? Because I uh, uh, just the main points or yeah. So you can just give share a few points of your own understanding. I don't expect you to write more pages on it, but just few. I wanted your personal understanding on each chapter. Uh, we can on that particular book on each chapter would actually be benefit. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I see Elisha's question here. Under the anointing, is it right for preachers to use words like foolish, stupid, because they are under the anointing or finding, find reference in scripture? Scripting. Okay. Is it something when they preach, Elisha, are you saying that when they preach, is it right for us to use such words? Is it so? Yes, yes, madam. Uh, yes, one thing we need to remember is to keep our words clean. Um, and listen, until we are reading it in scripture, uh, but when we preach and teach, I think it is good for us to avoid such words which may offend people. Okay, and I don't think that is not the right word to be used. In fact, in some of the uh, scriptures, when we were studying in our Old Testament survey, there are some scriptures which talks about when we're talking about the wisdom books, the Proverbs and Song of Songs, we came across such words like foolish and, you know, the other words. But I was just thinking how I can use it in the class. And I, I use the words like unwise or silly. Some some words, you know, uh, which can actually give a meaning as that. But then we, as much as possible, try to use words that is uh, that is pleasant to others and not offend others. Um, 
is that is that uh, did that answer your question elisha yes madam it's it's it does and it's perfectly resonates my my thoughts on some of these things thank you very Thank you. And uh, Rebecca, there's a question. Yeah. Okay, some places we see pastors selling anointed oil, water, even handkerchief to people. It's a right or wrong thing. Okay. Uh, yes, we believe in the anointed oil, water, uh, handkerchief, but then it should not become a play, a marketplace of selling and making money out of all those things. I, I think that part is not right. But then when we, we can always pray over the oil, uh, because that's what the scripture says, when somebody seek, use the anointing oil, water, or the handkerchief, but then yes, in some churches or some places, people have made it a business, that is not right. As... Uh, the time is running. We can end the session with a word of prayer. Can I request anyone to lead uh, to dismiss us in prayer, please? Sid, can you dismiss us in prayer, please? Yes, ma'am. Father, we come to the throne of grace. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the hour that we have spent in learning about your word, Lord. Whatever we have learned about preaching and Lord of, about the results, Lord. We pray that it should be added to our life, Lord, our learning, Lord, and it should be used for the kingdom expansion and your word, and your word, Lord. Let every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Christ Jesus is Lord. Thank you for this day, Lord. All the privileges that you have given us in this hour, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. See you all next week. God bless. Bye.